Um, well, um, yeah, that that's a good start, isn't it? Hi, welcome to my makeshift workbench. This is actually just my 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 home office. You know, this is just where I do all my stuff. Um, what I want to do. This is the guitar that I built uh, with a little bit of help from Pody. Uh, it was a very cheap $50 body, but it came pre-finished like this, and it was a hardtail, and I love hardtails. And this guitar has wound up being such an incredible good thing for me. Like, I just love, love, love it. Um, it's been quite the journey. I didn't expect that my the first guitar that I built would be worth keeping at all. But it is. Uh, the body is basswood, and the finish is, I believe, a plastic wrap. I'm not even kidding. Um, I have polished the hell out of it, but it is basically just plastic wrap. Um, so with that in mind, I was like, hey, if I'm going to build a guitar, I'm going to do something that has, um, you know, low risk about it. Uh, what if I screw it up? Oh, I'm only out 50 bucks, and I've learned something, right? Uh, it is the Amrocaster. Thank you very much, Jean. Uh, there is the Amrocaster and the Amrocabronita, which are the two that I, I built. Um, so, yeah, this is as cheap as a guitar body gets, but what made it unusual was that it was a hardtail, where most project bodies have the Strat Tremolo in it, and I don't prefer the trim. Um, and... Uh, it is full thickness. A lot of times the cheaper bodies are going to be thinner. Squires are notoriously a couple of millimeters thinner. They just It's just a, a cost savings. So uh, this was advertised on Guitar Fetish as part of their basics line. They have the XGP line, which is what I made the Cabernita out of. Um, and of course you can see me gesturing to it just off screen. Um, but this was... Uh, cheap and easy and so I, I was like 50 bucks for this and it's a gorgeous color i love it and then 35 dollars for the neck and the neck wound up being absolutely wrong for me and the body had uh the uh, the angle of this neck pocket was off by about two degrees so there was no way you could actually put a, a neck on the body and have it be playable i didn't know that i didn't actually figure that out before i had drilled the neck so Pody took the body from me, recut the neck pocket, so there's a little bit of play over here, but it's not that bad. Uh, you know, once it's bolted in, it kind of didn't matter much to me, and I bought a different neck, uh, which was a Mighty Might neck, which is uh, a very affordable replacement brand of necks uh, for people that work on guitars and stuff. So, um, I love this neck. This wound up being the right neck for me, uh, it's just a standard two-piece maple neck. That is, it's a maple back with a maple board on top of it. That's, again, the sort of cheaper option as things go. But it's also, uh, I have it on another guitar uh, that I got from Korea, which is amazing. And uh, Eddie Van Halen's uh, famous Strat, the, the one that he built, also had a two-piece maple neck. So I figure if it's good enough for Eddie, it's good enough for me, right? So uh, what I'm doing is I'm loosening the strings. Uh, I'll explain this little uh, hair tie and its function. Uh, there's something about this that makes the strings behind the nut. Please notice that I don't have any string trees. Wow. Let me see if I can also stop this fucking camera from constantly doing the auto... Uh, the autofocus. I swore I had turned that off and it's just not behaving. It's like fucking, no, yeah, turn off autofocus, asshole. Thank you. Just go all the way in and be all the way in. That's good. All right. Um, so I got staggered tuners. You can't really tell. Well, you can tell a little bit here. Um, the tuners, the two tuners at the top, the E and the B, are shorter than the ones in the middle, which are shorter than the ones at the end. So you have three stages, and they go down staggered. And that's so that the break angle of the string is more intense as you get over to the low E's, uh, but that it, it's supposed to make it so that you don't need string trees. Uh, I'm not a fan of them. I actually kind of got talked out of them by Pody, who does not like them at all. 
and uh, and I said, well, all right, well, if I can just get around it by using, uh, you know, string trees that are built for that, then that's better. Uh, I still have problems that may necessitate string trees on this guitar, uh, which I really don't want to do, but it might be what has to happen. So, um, in the meantime, I have a hair tie because these strings are resonating. Like, I'll hit an open chord, and particularly the G and the B will then resonate like an overtone, which I don't want. It's like it sounds wrong. You can actually hear it. So, uh, I figure, no, stop it, and uh, I'll deal with that later. But today... What I'm doing is uh, these necks were very cheap, very affordable, which I'm certainly not unhappy about, but they wound up needing a lot of work because they were cheap. That's, you know, shouldn't ever be surprised <laughs> that if you're barely uh, paying any money. And when I say barely any money, Warmoth is probably the premier replacement parts vendor, uh, and they get, you know... $170 for a neck with no nut in it and with nothing done to it, and probably closer to $250 to $300 for a completely set up neck. Um, that's, you know, basically you, you plug it in, you, you, you screw it in, and, and you're done. Um, this was closer to about $125, and then I got it on sale. Uh, so I think out the door shipped, I got two necks for $140 each. Uh, because the other neck was a, a rare wood. The other neck was like a $180 thing, and this was $120, uh, you know, shipped. So together, they, they sort of evened out. Um, so uh, I decided to change the nut. I was advised by uh, Orbiter Guitars here on Twitch. You should follow his channel if you're not. Uh, Orbiter Guitars is Greg in San Leandro. He's always been my guitar tech, and he said, uh, you know, you'll, it'll sound better. Uh, it'll feel better with a bone nut. It'll especially sound better. And mostly, it was a plastic nut, and I, I bought the files to cut it, and it was just going forever to cut this plastic nut. And I was like, why don't I just change the nut? And Pody's like, that's what I would do. So, of course, I want to do whatever Pody would do. Um, so, uh, I installed it, but I installed it a little bit further to the E side, like to the to the high E side. So it's it's got like a millimeter that hangs over, and that's bad because this guitar already, the E string I felt was like too close to the edge of the neck. But I was like, well, I can deal with it. Well, that was fine with the stock nut that was actually aligned. I misaligned it when I put it in. So I realized what I have to do is just take it out and do it again. Uh, this is not a problem because we have our friend wood glue. Where is the wood glue? Uh, it's around here somewhere. Uh, I'm going to be using Gorilla Glue, which uh, was the one that I could find. I would also recommend Tight Bond. It's very good glue. Um, there's the wood glue. I left it in the other room. Yay, wireless headphones. Um, I couldn't find the Tight Bond, but I've been doing a lot of projects with Gorilla Glue. Some people will put... Uh, some people will put nuts on with crazy glue, and I don't recommend it. Uh, I have had enough people in my life say, no, that's wrong, that I just trust them. So I used wood glue, and wood glue worked great. So, uh, good enough for me. Uh, should be good enough for you, damn it. All right, now, what I'm doing is I've taken this little, uh, this little spreader, which you can get you know, from Amazon or AliExpress. I have bought a lot of my guitar tools from AliExpress. They are hella cheap. Um, and that just keeps, that way I'm hoping I don't have to remove this whole set of strings. Uh, I've just slackened them a bit as much as I can because I do have locking tuners on this. Uh, and this gets them out of the way. So now I can work on the nut. Uh, let me see if I can actually zoom in. Uh, the camera at all to to help this a bit because I can see what I'm doing but you can't necessarily see what I'm doing um, and let's turn that off huh it's not letting me uh, activate my oh there it is it is sorry all right camera control zoom whoa there we go
And I have found that if I don't play a little music into my headphones, uh, then the, the headphones turn themselves off. Uh, this did not zoom in nearly. Oh, it just crashed the camera. No, there it is. The, I told it to zoom in like hella a lot, and it's not actually doing that. Um, hmm. Can, can you do? Will you do? Maybe my camera just doesn't have the level of zoom that I think it does. Like, yeah, that's all it does. Wow. All right. Well, then, kids, that's what you get. Uh, and be grateful. Uh, okay. So, anyway, that's what I'm up to. Um... If squires are thinner, asks Jean, I wonder how heavy Blondie's older cousins would be. Oh, Blondie is what I named my... Okay, I needed to know that first. Uh, squires are... Some squires are full width, uh, or full depth. Uh, most squires are a little bit thinner. Like this, American bodies are, uh, for Fender-style guitars, are one inch, uh, one and three quarters inches. I forget what the millimeters are. I think it's 40-something? Uh, no, I don't remember. It's one and three quarters inches. Most squires are one and a half inches. To me, I find that actually pretty comfortable. I have a squire that I rescued uh, two years ago, and I like the fact that it's a lighter guitar. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. Um, but, you know, some people just really want that classic American thing. So I thought it was, you know, worth doing here. Uh, so what I've got is I've got a brand new. Uh, this is a standard hobby knife and exacto blade. Um, I think I got this from Harbor Freight, and then I bought some, uh, yeah, Gordon brand. Like, who the hell is that? Um, but I got this to, uh, uh, along with some, some fresh blades. The best thing that you can do if you work with these hobby knives is have a shitload of blades on hand and change it whenever you do anything vaguely important. Um, I got used to using X-Acto knives from the magazine industry because Cat used to use these back in the days of Paste Up. Uh, so what I'm doing, uh, again, I put this nut in, so I know exactly what's in here. There's wood glue and nothing else. But I need to score the edges of the nut a little bit. I need to sort of break the seal of the glue by just cutting away at it a little bit underneath. And, uh, you know, again, if I destroy this, that's not the end of the world. I have more uh, bone nuts. Uh, I get my bone nuts from any decent, you know, Asian importer. It says uh, made in China. And it's not, of course, it's not uh, focusing because I want it to focus on here. Uh, but these are just bone nuts. These are uh, like maybe $5 a piece, probably closer to three um, because I'm a cheap bastard. And they come pre-slotted. Now, they're not finished, but they're pre-slotted. So I would love to reuse this nut because I've already filed it down a little bit. Hey, it's Orbiter Guitars. I was just telling you guys to follow Orbiter Guitars, was I not? Uh, it sometimes helps to warm the nut with a hairdryer before knocking it out. I have not had that issue uh, with the other ones. It, it, it only took me like 10 minutes to, to get it out. Um, and especially with a brand new X-Acto blade. I'm not going to bother with that uh, today, Greg. But Greg literally has taught me almost everything I know about guitars. Uh, and again, this is a... Uh, I love this neck, but it's also a cheap neck. So I'm, I'm scoring it a little bit. Uh, and only I will be able to see the mistakes I'm making. You should not replicate any of my mistakes. Now, I also have a small fret hammer. This is something that Greg told me to get and has served me very well. It has uh, screw-on edges. It's a plastic hammer. It's uh, designed for tapping in frets. Uh, and for this, it's also a very good light-duty hammer for what I'm trying to do. Um... So what I've got, and, and this probably won't work the first time, but what I've got is a little piece of scrap wood. I just, I pulled this out of my, uh, uh, my, my garage where we have the chop saw. And I'm going to try to get under this. Gee, I wonder, maybe I can, uh, 
maybe I will take I will take the string spreader off. It is certainly easier to work with this if you don't have strings on it at all, but I'm going to I'm going to just move them over so that I can get a straight shot. I am there is a little lip under here and this is what's driving me crazy. Uh, like I made this mistake, but I can actually put this this piece of wood and get it underneath the edge that's f falling over. Um, and I, all I want to do at the end of this is slide this nut or replace this nut if I have to and slide it over closer to the base side. If there's any overhang, I'd rather it be on the base side because I had like three millimeters here and two millimeters here. And it was really bothering me whenever I would try to do uh, anything. So I'm going to just tap through the block uh, see if I can start encouraging this. And there we go. Look at that. It came right out. Boom. That's it. Because I didn't use a lot of glue when I put it in there. I just used a little bit. Honestly, the string tension is going to keep it right where it needs to be most of the time. You may have seen cheap guitars with bad, uh, badly secured nuts. Uh where that's all there is. Like, they, they don't even bother. I've had guitars that just, eh, I'll keep, I'll keep the strings in place with the string, t I'll keep the nut in place with the string tension. Not the best idea. Uh, but, you know, you can get away with it. It's not the worst idea either. Um, so that came out super easy, which makes me feel good because I didn't want it in there forever. Uh, I will say that the first time that I, I did anything with a nut, I was replacing the nut on a base a uh, Fender Bronco bass, a really terrible bass, and the nut looked like a mountain range, really did. And I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, so we used epoxy, you know, the two tubes with uh, adhesive that you lock together, you know, you mix it together to make a super tight bond. We were sloppy, we were stupid, we thought we were fixing everything and we thought we were so clever, and then I'm like, oh my god, that's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Uh, hang on just a moment. Sorry, we are, uh, you are also at the tail end of Cat and my Etsy store for this year. Um, we are doing the last few orders that I think we'll be able to get out before the holiday. Um, and uh, so I am I am sort of jockeying that. So what I've got here is just, this is one of those little bone nuts like before. It's pre-slotted. And then, of course, then I took uh, I took my files and, and uh, made them the grooves a little bit deeper to match this guitar and to help the playability of this guitar. Um, I've got some light sandpaper here, like very light, like 2,000 grit, I think. Uh, I have some 600. And I think I have some 2,000. Yeah. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I, this is a, uh, a little auto detailer uh, Velcro sandpaper kit. The, I got this from AutoZone. And this is foam rubber. And then you just replace these little strips. And I've written on the back in Sharpie as to what grid it is, because it came with 400, 1,000, and 1,500. I use these to work on the frets. Um, they're really good for removing oxidation without doing a lot of damage. Uh, you know, this is not that. But for what I'm trying to do is just rough up the bottom of this. Since I've got a little glue on there, I kind of want to give it a fresh a fresh start. And 400 is a pretty good grit. It's not going to take a ton of material off. But it will help rough this up so that it takes the glue again. Um, I don't want to take too much off the bottom anyway because I like where it was sitting but I can feel there's a little glue residue here. I'm okay even leaving some of the glue residue there. Uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem. But I could see little flecks of glue and bone coming off. Um, it's pretty smooth now. I might actually want to rough it up, take that exacto, and score it a little bit. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of that really lightweight, that 2,000 grit sandpaper. See? 2,000. And I'm just going to push it in here. This is actually why this piece of paper was already folded. I'm just going to slide it through here. Again, uh, remove a little bit of that excess glue.
there wasn't a lot of glue to begin with. Um, sorry, gang. I I forgot. I need to be listening. I need to pipe music through these headphones, or they assume they are not being used. Uh, if they're not used as playback, then it they turn themselves off and it takes the mic with it. So I'm going to literally put the quietest thing. You probably won't be able to hear it. Uh, I'm just going to put one of my favorite uh, Spotify mixes in the background so that I can't hear it. Uh, but it'll keep these, uh, these headphones active. So that's good. Uh, yeah, I would let Greg discuss the zero fret because I have always heard stories of why it's there and it was not in fashion when I was coming up uh, but it was in fashion in the 60s my idea is that it was supposed to help intonation correct um, it acts as the nut and then the nut itself is more of a string guide brighter sounding especially when playing open chords uh, you know it was I had always heard that it was an excuse for poor workmanship now Greg can absolutely fight me on that one because I, I it's not something i believe that's just something that i had heard that like the zero fret was the sign of a cheaper guitar but now i've seen the zero fret on some really high-end guitars and i think it was just the nature that it was in vogue to use a zero fret when cheap guitars ruled the earth you know like in the 60s after beatlemania when everybody and his brother was making a garage band and you wanted to get a cheap instrument out there the zero fret was just considered how it was made at the time. So it's not that they are terrible, it's that it's a choice. Uh, and so, you know, that's what it is. Um, many famous guitars have used zero frets. I believe uh, Paul McCartney's bass has a zero fret. Um, so I'm just I'm just roughing up this, uh, this a little bit, actually kind of smoothing it out. There is a little bit of glue I can see at the bottom. It's not the end of the world. Uh, you can see that the, the paper is getting a little white on it. Uh, these are Arctis uh, Steel Series Arctis 7s. Kat and I bought these for ourselves last year as our big holiday gift to each other. And oh my goodness, I have been so happy. Uh, they really are good for us. Uh, they are the most comfortable long-term headphones I've had. Uh, I used to love Astro A30s. I still enjoy Astro A30s. The comfort of these for literally five or seven hour sessions is beyond compare. Uh, I've got a little compressed air. Uh, I don't have the, the, the stick on it, but given what I'm doing, that's okay. There's not a lot of dust there, but I'm, I'm doing it anyway. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that the Hofner 500 one had a zero fret, but I may be wrong. Mine does not. My knockoff, my Hofner, uh, you know, uh, ignition series, their their import, their Chinese knockoffs of their their own, does not. Uh, let's see, what else did I miss? Did I miss anything else that you were asking about? Uh, oh yeah, Warmoth, famous for parts casters. I would have gone to Warmoth and bought Warmoth, except uh, I was cheap. And I did not trust myself. I was not going to, you know, buy a $350 or even a $600 finished body from them and then a $300 neck only to wind up screwing everything up. So I went super cheap and then reinvested in the neck. You know, the $35 neck is in my closet because I also fucked it up when I found out how not to install tuners. So now that's just, it's, it's a 13.7 inch radius neck. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Um, Pody actually plugged it and reinstalled it in this guitar for me, and I played it for about a week and a half, and I said, thank you for, for helping me fix that problem. I can't play this. Uh, and then I went out and I bought this online, and it's got a nice... It doesn't have... Greg will understand this. I like the ESP XJ6 neck very much. That's my default neck. If it doesn't feel like that, it's wrong. This is a little rounder than that, but it's still so comfortable and I love interacting with it. So it, it's within my very small tolerance of neck profiles. The Telecaster feels much more like the XJ. The Telecaster Mighty Might neck has a different profile. This has a little bit of a rounder strap profile and for whatever reason, I adore it. And it's a satin finish, so it's great. So, uh, all right, so now we've come to the very simple part of, uh, like I said, I was gonna 
maybe score this a little bit. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife again, uh, and I'm just going to just going to slice in with the back of the blade, uh, and I'm going to rough this up a little bit, making little X marks on the back. This is just so that, you know, this is bone. It's uh, it's soft enough that that will help. And again, I don't need a lot uh, of glue, nor do I need a lot of grooves in the bottom of this. Uh, but I did just smooth it out with 400 grit, so I kind of don't want it to be completely... Uh, completely smooth. I want to give it some little micro uh, uh, areas to grab onto. Uh, let me push the button. I live next to the laser printer. The, in or the infamous laser cutter actually lives next to my head, uh, so you may hear it in the background, but frankly, the Arcticists are so good that you probably can't. They're very good at rejecting uh, rejecting unwanted noise. Okay, so before we start gluing, just to recap, I kept the strings on. This is a hardtail strat. It came with a plastic nut. I, at Greg's uh, suggestion, and after just not liking how the, the plastic nut was filing down, which needed to be done anyway, I simply replaced it with a cheap bone nut that I got off of Amazon. You can get them off of AliExpress. Uh, I think it was between 6 and $8 for two bone nuts. This is from the previous one. I put I put two nuts on both of the two parts casters that I did, and I have these as spares in case something goes wrong. If I break one, I never like to have something like this, a core functional part, and not have a spare. So given that it was super cheap and I was ordering a shitload of stuff over Black Friday anyway, I was like, you know what? I should get two more of those. So these are 42 millimeter nuts. Um, this is a 42 millimeter thing that's very standard for Fender. Uh, this is a Fender licensed neck from Mighty Might, so uh, I can basically use straight on uh, stuff. Now, this is actually, huh, this is not going back in cleanly. Uh, it's sticking a little bit, and that means that I probably put glue on the side and didn't take that glue off. Again, I don't want it to go too far down. I'm using a light touch. I am getting some, some material off of the nut. I want to make sure I do it on both sides, just rubbing it on 400 grit sandpaper here. You can see that a fair amount of material is coming off. That bone dust is is real. Um, and I, I want this to be a snug but not impossible fit. Like, that's good. I actually, I probably took a little bit of glue off, if anything. And so this is fine. This is very snug. It's not flopping back and forth. Um, now the trick is, it is a little too wide. It is maybe one millimeter wide. So this might be a 42 slot and a 43 nut. That's close enough for me. I don't care. Quite honestly, I don't care. The problem was, uh, that of course I have already cut this one, uh, with nut files a little bit. So I'd like to reuse it. And if it hangs over a little bit, it's it's actually not going to bother me. So I can either center it so that it hangs over both sides equally, or what I was planning on doing was sneak it so that it's aligned with a high E and leave this off and then maybe file that away. You know, that's okay. Uh, to, be, to be sure, I'm taking one of the brand new nuts, sliding this in. Oh, that, oh that's a beefier nut. That is a big boy. Uh, it doesn't really want to go in there, so let's uh, let's do the same thing I just did. And I want to see if, if this one actually does align, maybe I'll just put a new nut in. Uh, I did not have to do a lot of work on the fret slots on these. Their guide uh, slots were pretty much spot on. Uh, it was kind of nice. Um, uh, dude, I, th I, have s I would not be surprised to find out that they've used every slippery material known to man for uh, slide guitar. Uh, yeah, everything from obviously coracidin bottles on through to, uh, to to bones, of course. That makes sense. All right, so we got this in, and you know what? It's exactly the same size. It's uh, it says it's 42. Maybe my my nut is a little too. Uh, maybe my neck is a little too small. Again, I didn't pay a lot. Uh, so there's always the chance that it's, 
it's not quite as uh, fancy as I would. It disconnected again, so I guess I must not have the... Uh, Uh, do I have this set up correctly? Yeah, I do. It thinks it's playing here. Let's get it to come back and do it again. You may hear... You know what I should do? I should I should put the Hero Falls playlist on in the background so that if you hear anything, you're hearing something that is not going to get anybody in trouble <laughs> uh, for, do, for hearing anything. Because I, I hereby grant permission for my uh, my stuff to be heard on Twitch. You don't have to get in trouble. Uh, I always get the giggles when the punks bring go. out their guns. I can't gather up their weapons. And I'll it says that it's playing. That's weird. Uh, huh. I wonder why it just isn't playing. Oh. There it is. I got it. What's the matter? Sure. Say hi to people. Oh my god. Where's your cover? Oh, alright. Are you sure that it's a quest 2 and not a quest 1? Because it toads doesn't look like it is so let's give it up for me this might be cv1 did you see me on tv yeah yeah, yeah there's there's no there's, there's no grooves for it to go into where's your other interface do you have that handy let's i mean i can pull mine hi sorry virtual reality uh, uh tech support do I get uh, live hero stuff it kind of all uh, yeah i think somebody lied to you <laughs> got a new interface that she was hoping would be more comfortable. It does not appear to me that this is actually made to work with her headset, and I'm afraid to push it. Yeah, but look at the connectors. Yeah, that's... that's They lied. They lied to you. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. Can you believe the editor who says I'm out of line? Okay. So now you should be able to hear a little bit of the wonderful strains of Hero Falls in the background. Uh, and I don't care if uh, they ban me for playing my own music. I'd like to fucking see Twitch try. All right, so where did we leave off? These are nuts. These are spare nuts. I don't need them anymore. These nuts can go away. I am going to reattach the, uh, the original nut. Um... And I had, somewhere in this, I had a toothpick. Because obviously that's all I need to apply wood <laughs> in this context. Uh, oh, you know what else would probably work? I could probably play Pallet Swap Ninja because we don't have any copyright claims on that or any distribution whatsoever. Um... Where did I put... Oh, there we go. I always keep a few uh, toothpicks. And of course, I will find the next toothpick as soon as uh, this stream is over, wherever, with the one that I preset. So, just a simple colored toothpick. I, I just like colors. They're fun. Um, and I will get... Uh, wow. The problem with this wood glue... Again, this is Gorilla wood glue. I've been using this on some other projects. Uh, later on, John, uh, I I like it. It works fine. Um, I also like uh, tight, tight bond uh, because this stuff keeps sealing itself as is the nature with these kind of glues. Uh, so I always sort of have to cut Cut the old glue away to get some new glue out. There we go. So you can see there's just a little couple of nubs on top there. 
And that's all I'm going to start with. I just need to put a little bit of glue on there. I'm going to put some on the nut, and I'm going to put some in the slot. The slot is obviously easier to do. Uh, here we go. Just work it down into the bottom. And again, I'm not planning on using a lot. Um, I have found that this stuff in particular, it could just be because of the age of my glue, uh, is pretty gloopy too. Um, so I'm just I'm just putting some glue, not a ton, a light coating, and I'm trying to break up the little um, balls, the little glops of glue that are coming out here. Uh, trying to break them up into uh, a thin layer. This is probably all the glue I would ever need to do this job. Uh, because again, I want it to be solid enough to stay, but I don't want it to be stuck in there for eternity. Like, it would be terrible uh, to do that. Uh, to make it so that I, it just can't be removed. There's no logic behind that, because... Nuts wear out too. What if this one breaks? It's a cheap, a cheap little bone nut, as I have said many times. So, gotta make sure that I'm doing the right thing. And if something is wrong, then I can replace it as easily as I am replacing it today, which is like, oh, what do you want to do before lunch? Oh, I'd actually like to fix the guitar. What's wrong with it? Nothing. I'm just a picky jerk. You know what? Here. Take this. Wow, this glue just doesn't want to come out at all. Oh! Terrible. And we'll just kiss it here. There we go. That's all I wanted to do. Just kiss it. Give me a little... A little bit on the bottom. So I've got... You can't tell. It's t it's too blurry. Sorry. But I'm going to just smooth it out on the bottom of the nut. Now, and I'm going to stick a little bit on the side. Just a, a hint on the sides of the nut. Because I don't, I don't want it more than that. And now I'm going to align it, I'm pressing down. It is pretty far. Ah, I have gotten glue on the strings. That's bad. But we can clean those off easily enough. I'm going to use the clean side of the toothpick to scrape away any excess wood that's on the neck itself. Uh, I like the alignment of this more. It is very noticeably hanging over on the base side. But this will get me more room. And if I just take off the side here, you know, with, uh, with a file, I should be fine. Oh, yeah. Uh, Greg, I'm not surprised to hear that they... That was a very cheap guitar. Remember, Lammy was basically a novelty guitar to get little girls in Japan to think that you know to, to be rock stars and to inspire them to play but it wasn't a very well uh, assembled guitar for that. I'm sure it came out like shattered uh, <laughs> but I'm I've never uh, I've never been unhappy that you made that change uh, that was the right thing to do okay so this is pretty much it now, I could say I'll leave this to dry, but why bother? Uh, all I'm really doing is I'm going to put these strings back on, and the string tension will will keep it uh, solid. It'll keep it right in place uh, when I tune this back up. Um, I need to make sure that it doesn't move uh, when I do this. I don't want the nut to shift. Because the whole point of this was that uh, 
I wanted the high strings to be a little bit further on the on the fretboard. Now I have put a little bit of tension on the high E and the low E. I'm going to bring the camera down. Please pardon me while I attempt to bring the camera down because uh, here is the nut. Now, again, it's a little blurry just because of how I have it set up. But you can see that I now have a lot more space for the high E for bends, and the low E is a little close. Uh, maybe I want to go for uh, a sort of happy medium in between, uh, which I can do very easily just by tapping it before it dries. Uh, but that... That looks a lot better than it did. I'll tell you that for sure. Because it was, it was freaking me out. Every time I picked it up, I'm like, what are you doing? Why are you so close to the, the edge of the fretboard? And I, I figure if I, if I have a little extra space on either side, I want more space on the, uh, on the low E, or on the high E, so that I can bend. Uh, and I felt like, even though I don't do a lot of lead playing with a lot of bending, uh, that was part of the trick. Yeah, this looks pretty good. I'm going to actually give it one, one or two solid taps. And this is a lot better. Uh, gee, I wish I had taken a before photo so that I could show. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Greg, you know me. I'm looking for the, the easy way to go. And the easy way to go is uh, just use it as it comes and throw it in there and be happy. Uh, which, you know, I'm fine doing. Um, and if there's a little overhang, I'm the only one that sees it. Uh, but also, I'm the only one that sees it uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, Looks like I got a little a flake of glue there. So yeah, a little glue has uh, has spit out the back end. Uh, of the nut here. And we're just gonna... Yes, I'm happy with that. That, actually, putting it kind of in the middle feels good. So yeah, I could, I could suppose I could just shave off the sides, maybe even with my little... Uh, you know, with my little 400 grit uh, piece of Velcro stuff, I could potentially just sort of go away at that very lightly forever. <laughs> um, but I'm 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 much happier now that uh, this is a uh, better aligned. I have a little bit more room to grip and grab here, which is where I do most of my playing. You know, I'm a, I'm a rhythm player, so it's... We don't go above the ninth fret all that often unless we're going up. See you later, Greg. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for being here. and Thanks for teaching me everything I know.